Well, good morning, everybody. Well, good afternoon, good afternoon. Good afternoon. You know, welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. For those online, we thank you. Those near and far, we do thank God for you tuning in once again. Hey, y'all, we are going to get into the word today. There is something that's going to be um, deposited, I believe. Now, there's a lot of this in me that I want to say. Some stuff I don't need to say publicly that we'll meet privately and I'll begin to share some things uh, with our team and just with everybody. Um, God is good. He is, he is great. Um, I feel like there's an explosion that, that is going to take place that is taking place. It's already happened. It's already, things are already manifesting. But I'm going to begin to share our role in it. What well, God is speaking to me about this ministry, about certain things that need to get done and accomplished. Um, I, 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 I'll share a little bit. I'm trying to be mindful of what I share, how I share. But I believe that lives are going to be transformed like we've never seen before. This is a time where people's lives and ministries, they're going to be the birthing of a lot of things, whether it's your business, whether it's your, your ministries, whether, whatever it is God calls you to do. There's supposed to be an acceleration. There's supposed to be manifestation. There's supposed to be fruit and that your fruit is going to remain. And I want you to do this. When God called me and told me to go teach his people who they are, there's this identity that we have in Christ that once we understand our identity in Christ, we'll begin to walk in the authority that we have in Christ, the power, the strength, the might. And I was telling, I don't know if I was telling my daughter, telling my wife, somebody, I was talking to somebody. And just things that are being prophesied, things that are being released. I'm like, God, we've been talking about this all along, but it's like, it's time. It's past time. It, it, this, 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 is, this is, the best way I can say it is this. God wants to come upon you to accelerate you. God wants to come upon you to deal with anything that's been a hindrance to your life from the moment you were born to now. It's time for things to be completely wiped. And I'm telling you, God is sweeping the house. He is sweeping his church. And I had to ask God about my heart, and I had to talk to him about my heart. Because of just the things that we've been through, things I've been through with people, things I've been through, I'm like, God, reignite that love for people again. And I just had to be honest. I had to talk to him. We just had to have a conversation. And I'm like, God, yeah, my heart's been hurt. This, this, I, I've been hurt. So it's like, but now I had to admit, okay, I got to release this hurt. I cannot hold things against people any longer. Whether it's a private thing that I try to cover up with a smile and try to say glory to God, hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. Hey, brother, hey, sister. And then on the inside, I'm still struggling with, oh, I don't like what you did. Now, I don't know if I'm the only one that's gone through that, but at the same time, it's like, I got to be honest about it. And sometimes we perfect phoniness. And I just had a, a good time away at a ministers and leaders conference, and my pastor was talking about that. It's like, man, we just fed up with the perfecting the phoniness and people putting on the mask and acting like you okay when you really not. And especially, and see, I can speak from this standpoint because I grew up in it, because so I qualify for this, what I'm getting ready to say. Especially in word of faith circles, We've been trained, and I get it, that we call those things which be not as though they were, but sometimes in doing that, we don't admit when something is really going on, so we never get to the root of it. Because sometimes God can lead somebody across your path to ask you, how are you? Okay, I know you blessed, highly favored, and empowered to prosper. Wait a minute. How are you? Man, Pastor, I'm hurt. I'm struggling right now. Okay, now we can work with something here. Now we can work with something because now we can get to the root of this thing. And what God is doing is stuff that has been flaring up in your life over and over. He's about to rip it up from the root. 
And I said, I keep stealing this from my mom. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of keep apologizing. I keep taking this from my wife because we, we're going to have a conference with it. But this time around, <laughs> you're not going to build on a faulty foundation. It's time to rip up. It's time to tear up whatever you can't, whatever you can't use, it's time to get rid of it. Amen. What do I mean by that? There are some ideologies that you've had, some ideologies that we've had about things, and sometimes in quiet that you might question it. There were a lot of things in quiet that I would ask God questions about. I never said it publicly, but I dealt with it privately, and I said, let me get into your word. Let me, let me pray. Let me spend time with you. Let me hear God because I don't want to just repeat what I heard the other person say. I got to make sure that what I'm speaking is by your spirit and by your word. And so I'm going to go back and sift through my own theology about things and make sure that what I'm preaching is coming straight out of this book that is line upon line, precept upon precept. Because at this moment, because so many times we get stuff from people and it's like, where did you get that from? You just heard somebody say it and you just repeated it. Because it sounded good. Because there are a lot of words that sound good, but it ain't God. And we're going to check it. See, I do this. I check myself first. And as I begin to grow with some things, it begin to attack some stuff that I'm like, wait a minute, I was taught one way, but now as I'm digging deeper and deeper, wait a minute, uh-uh. But I got to be bold enough humble enough and brave enough to say, watch this, but with the right attitude. You see what I'm saying? It's not like now you just dismiss everything. No, there's a lot of great things that I got. A lot of awesome things. Awesome foundation. L listen, I learned how to study to show myself approved. I, I, so that I could now. Now, but now as I'm growing up, I feel as though and I believe as though that God is calling me. It, it's like, I don't know when it happened, Elder. All of a sudden now I become OG. I'm like, unk to a lot of people now. It's like, wait a minute, when did I become the uncle? That time went by kind of quick. But God is dealing with me about even this next generation of ministers and leaders that are coming up. That part of my job is to mentor, is to mold, is to impart, is to now help to release, is to provide platforms and to begin to grow. And I'm telling you, God has, he's, he's cautioned me, he's warned me, He's, 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 what's, what's the word? He's rebuked, he's reproved, he's, he's prompted me to, to say some things, do some things, meet with some people, talk about some stuff, get some stuff out in the open, deal with this, deal with that, meet with this. I'm just telling you. And now what's happening is I'm finally, I'm, I'm finally, I'm coming to a place, right? I'm, I'm, I'm really getting comfortable in my own skin now. And there are a lot of people who think they know me. But I never shared all of who I was. So how could you? Because I felt as though I had to conform to be a certain way to fit in certain groups. That if I was really who I was, this group wouldn't really receive me. And then it's like this group, I felt like, okay, can, can I just be straight up? Hello, I'm trying to... I don't know why I'm talking about this. I'm just kind of going there. <laughs> it's almost like I'm dressed for where I'm going, but I don't fit where I am because I'm dressed from where I'm heading. And so there are some circles I'd be in and things It's like, huh, I don't feel comfortable here. Then I didn't feel comfortable there. But at the same time, I needed to learn something for where I was going. So an uncomfortableness in going where you're supposed to, that's a good being a good uncomfortable, let me, let me say it like this. I was talking to John Mike about this. I said, I said, you play ball. I said, and I used to tell him about how I was as a child with certain things. Sometimes I might be around people playing things that I knew were lesser than me and my abilities, so it didn't challenge me to grow. But then I still could swing with my peers, but part of it was I didn't feel as developed in certain areas to play because... I was still playing with people at a lower level. I said, in order to be better, you got to get around better and you got to play with better. And that way that challenges you to become better. It's the same way in life. It's time for greater exposure. All right. 
I'm trying to say something without saying because I don't want to reveal. But I'll share it this way. I remember when we moved to Atlanta and um, we went and visited the church. And I remember we walked in and the floor was marble floors, plush leather high back seats, soft Corinthian leather, uh, cherry wood desk, or it might have been mahogany. The desk, the, the secretary's desk, the receptionist's desk. And I asked my wife, I said, and I looked at the chairs, I said, we can sit in these? <laughs> because even though I came from a place of excellence, I found out there was another level. And at one point, somebody tried to talk to me, and I'm not even going to say who the person is, but it was like, well, yeah, oh, you know, when I told them even about where we were going, where we were heading, it was like, well, yeah, all they do is they do a couple of things, this, this, and the other, but it ain't much different from what we do. And I'm thinking, no, they on a whole nother level. That's pride talking. I learned later that's what it was. It wasn't a dismiss or dishonor to where I was, but I knew in order for greater, I had to connect to greater. And so my desire now is I want to become greater because if you connected to me, but I ain't going nowhere, that hinders your growth. And I can't have that. I cannot have that. And as men, I challenge you as heads of household, listen, if you want your household to become greater, you make a determination to become greater. Do what you got to do. Because too many people attach to you. And I'm being, I'm being honest and I'm being serious because this time around, we got to do things different. And what I'm going to begin, and some of the things I'm going to begin to share is stuff that's been in my heart the whole time, but in some cases, I never released it. So I said, I'm just, I don't want to use this term, but it's almost like you know the term, going for broke. type of, So it's like, I'm just going for it. If I miss it, I miss it. At least I missed it trying not to miss it. Whatever's in me. And so I want you to get ready for this journey. This is part of what I feel like I needed to get out to in the beginning. Get ready for a new journey. Get ready for the power of God to show up. Your children need to see it. Your children's children need to see. You, talk, you talked about the goodness of God. They need, it's time to see the manifested goodness of God. So online and in person, get ready for the goodness of God to hit your life like never before. Let's get into this word today. Let's get into this word. Let's get into this word. Amen. Yeah, go ahead and give God some praise. Boy. Yeah, we just go ahead. Now, man. Are we good? We need somebody to work this camera. I feel like walking a little bit. Um, whew. Lord. What is it? What, goodness, what is this thing that's hitting me? Um, I've been dealing with, um, we talked about, started the series Restore, or uh, Recovery, the Recovery. And I made, a, I made an adjustment last week, and I started getting into, we talked about the recovery and using your faith to recover. In other words, to recover or to build. Wherever you currently are, God says you need to use your faith to get to where you want to go and need to go. And so this message for any and everybody in here, I want to teach you. This is something I've even taught my son where it applies to athletics or applies to school. And my daughter, we have conversations. It's like no matter what, you can use your faith to excel and to advance. That if you believe God and you trust God, he'll position you in places that you never thought that you could be in because you submitted your life and yourself to him. I was 16 when I gave my life to the Lord and got filled with the Holy Ghost. Two weeks later, this youth pastor prophesied over all of the children in my family, and everything that man prophesied has come to pass in my life. He says, I'm going to give you the ability to speak into people's lives and see the things that are binding them up. 
for the purpose of delivering them and setting them free. So me seeing into the spirit is not for judgment, but it's for deliverance. He says, when, and certain, there are certain things I, I can go in places and just see, and I'm not even trying to see it. But he said, then he reminds me, what can you do to help in this situation? Because you are graced and anointed for other people's deliverance. So there might be something that's going on. And there were times, I mean, young people, and I used to serve in youth ministry, and some of the young people, my wife would tell you, they did not want to come around me at times because they thought God was going to show me what they were doing. I'm serious. Because I got so hungry for God and I got in his presence, his power came on me, and he began to teach me my identity. And that was one of the first lessons he taught me was who I was in Christ. So that I could become confident, because you got to know who you are when you're about to walk in these new circles you're about to walk in. You hear me? You better be confident. Now, I, Jim, let me ask you real quick. You remember, can I, can I tell a story we were playing? I won't tell it if you say I can't. AU, I know you don't even know you. Know? AU, but confidence. You remember that? You don't even remember. So good, I can remind you every now and then. <laughs> no, we was at an AAU tournament. And he was playing with his team, well known, established AAU circuit team. And he was playing, one of the tallest kids on the team at that time. And the coaches were kind of getting on him about, come on, JM. It's like, man, you get, and all of his trainers, everybody saw that he had that factor. He had something in him. He had the potential. See, potential is just unrealized ability. You got it, but nobody, you haven't displayed it yet. And I remember they were warming up before a game. I said, man, come here. I said, come here. Sit beside me. I said, you know, what's going on? I said, I said you need to work on your confidence. And then he just simply said, he might have been, he might what, 13, 14, might have been 13 at that time. I don't remember how old. When I say you need confidence, he says, I don't know how. And it hit me. It was like, wait a minute. How can I explain to him right now how to build his confidence? Because then it, it hit me and it clicked at that moment. We never had this discussion. Because sometimes you can assume things, and you can assume stuff, and then I remembered, and I went back. Now, I'm sharing this for a reason, and I was trying to figure out, God, why you bring this back up? Now I see why he's bringing some of this stuff up. And, and Deacon Kendra might remember this moment. We were at the school, and y'all were doing a, a demonstration, a karate demonstration. And John Michael started crying because he felt uncomfortable. And I took him in the bathroom, you know, as a father, it's like, okay, son. I was like, okay, go ahead, get it out. But then after he started, started crying, I said, all right, now, calm down. Get your emotions in check. I said, there are going to be things in life that's going to be tough, and you're going to, learn, you're going to have to learn how to push through your feelings in moments where it seems the toughest. And it's in your pushing through is when your strength comes. It's like a chicken before it's hatching as an egg, you know, but comes out the egg, a bird that comes out. If you break the egg open and just pull the bird out, you will, uh, the bird will be incapacitated. Why? Because in breaking through the shell, they build their neck to eat. So if you rob them of the process of pecking through the shell, you just short-circuited their strength, their growth, and their development. That's why some stuff God ain't just brought you out of yet. He says, I need you to fight through and to exercise your authority to build your spiritual stamina for where I'm taking you. Some stuff God doesn't cause, he may allow, but he knows what you got. That's why he allowed it. See, he knows who he made when he made you. He knows the personality he gave you. You are who you are for a reason. 
And so instead of people trying to talk you out of who you are, you just need to know who you are in him, build yourself in him, strengthen yourself in him, because watch this, people call you stubborn, you just strong will. And God gave you that personality because of the stuff you're going to encounter. You got to know how to stand your ground. You got to know how not to bend, break under the pressure. So that's why he made you that way. Now, the flip side is when he's trying to get something to you, but now you're being called stiff neck because you're not flexible to what he's saying, now it turns into stubbornness. So you got to know how to use your greatest strength so that it doesn't become your greatest weakness. See, this is where identity comes in, because even when you understand your identity as a believer and the authority as a believer, you got to know how did God wire me? See, God, God knows I'm the type, I always root for the underdog. It's not that I'm, 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 per, I'm, I'm against successful people or successful teams, but usually I go for the one that's the underdog because I like to see them come out on top. But God made me that way because I'm that way with people. So I'm drawing the people who in life are being defeated, depressed, that they seem like they're being malnutrition. I always hated bullets growing up. And so now I'm the same way, and Satan is a bully. So if he can come and bully you in your mind, bully you in your body, bully you in your finances, bully you in your relationships, there's something in me that rises up. That when I see you fall, and if I see you under attack, there's something in me that just rises up and I'm ready to fight. See, my mom's a fighter too. She's strong, but she's a nurturer. Women more so sometimes are nurturers. Men, see... People, many of you don't know my dad. Now, my, my dad went on home to be with the Lord, but I began to realize that God gave me components of both of them. My dad was real no-nonsense. He was hilarious, but an in-your-face person. And I begin to see, God, you gave me a, a, a dose of both because I got to have a level of nurturing to walk in this office, but I got to have that stick to and to be able to get in people's grill and say, wait a minute, what you doing ain't right. Get yourself together and get up. And not be moved by your feelings. And I'm telling you now that God has been working on me, folks. I, listen, my wife would tell you, she was like, I don't know what didn't happen. It's like, we done switch roles or something. My, my daughter tell you, like, oh, dad, you was like, now I had to check myself because I don't want to go overboard because I don't want old Mike to come up. Because a lot of times I would, why am I talking about all this? Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would, I would be, I would avoid confrontation. The reason why is I was more afraid of how I would respond than the other person. Because I knew if they said something sideways, I may go there with you. So instead of dealing with that, I would just leave it alone because I was all or nothing. Because you know in the street there ain't no fair fight. So we going at it, yo, ain't no rules. I go for the jugular. I'm going to take you out so you never even think about coming back again. He was like, oh, pastor, you, yeah, yeah. But I'm the same way spiritually. And my family said, um, dad, my children were like, you need to um, work on your face while you're walking because you look real intimidating when you're walking in places and walking towards people. I said, no, I said, I try to kind of change my face. They was like, no. Nah. Even my wife said, no, nah, you kind of, you need to soften up a little bit. Because, you know, be honest, they just look at me as a big black dude coming in the area. And I've seen it. Then I intentionally tried to put people at ease. I was like, no, nah, I'm a good one. I'm cool. <laughs> I'm good. I'm happy. I like you. I love you. Praise the Lord. But I begin to realize something. God gave me this. Now, this is good. This is good. That's good, Holy Spirit. I'm, yeah, this is a different way he's taking me with this. I remember, I give him a shout out, Pastor Calvin Duncan, when I was working with him in youth ministry. And I remember he told me one day, we was in the office, he said, Mike, 
He said, man, you got a great personality, man. He said, you just don't show it as much. Because like when we were serving ministry, I'm like, I, I, was the, I was the spiritual police of the church, of the youth ministry. So I'm watching, making sure everything's straight. You know, all the kids cool. You like, he tells somebody to sit down. I'm, I'm like mega usher. I'm making sure you straight. All right, sit down. What do you say? <laughs> you know, that type of thing. But then something switched. In other words, it was like, pull down the walls and the veil and let people in. He didn't say it that way. And then I began, my wife, this is when we were dating. I think we were in Williamsburg. And I was just going around speaking to people. I had never really done that before. Just people I didn't know, ran, didn't know random people. Hey, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, my ministry changed. Children began to flock to us. Because they saw us. And this is the one thing I had. I had a, a pastor, local pastor here. Several years he called me. He said, man, how do you get young people in your church or young adults and stuff? He said, I just want to, said, I want to know. And all I told him was, be you. That's a word, but I wanted, I wanted to kick in. You're trying to be somebody you're not thinking is going to get you what you want. And God is simply saying, be you. You're not me. Digging Kendrick, right? Hilarious personality. He is one of the silliest men. He, listen, you know, he, he'll try some anything. I said, Lord, only Digging Kendrick. I just shake my head and just start laughing. But don't you know that's a part of who he is and God wants to use that? to draw and to increase him. Same way with you. Whatever it is you've been called to do, be you. Why am I talking about this? I'm talking about this. Well, you need to open up a scripture. I've been listening. I'm, this is the living epistle. This is what scripture talks about being a living epistle. When you put the word in you, it's working through you, and now God is trying to show you something, that you are enough. You, you got to realize that. Say this. Say, I am enough. I am enough. <laughs> you better hear me. You are enough just where you are. Does that mean you don't need to grow? No. But God has given you your core personality characteristics and traits, and now he wants you to work in him through his word, by his spirit, and let his super come on your natural. to assist you in growing and developing and becoming the best version of you in him. Y'all y'all with me? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Y'all, 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 you feel me? So now it's a thing of, okay, I had to check myself, and I, John, I keep hating to bring you up, but this is, this is so good. But this ain't about you, this is about me. The Holy Spirit, I believe he checked me or the thought came to me And I had to check myself not to get on him so hard about things because it could come across as I'm not good enough as I am. My desire was never to make him feel that way, but to motivate him, to push him, to drive him to be the best. But at the same time, it's almost like I had to catch my, man, why are you like this? Holy Ghost had to catch me quick. He said, if you keep talking like that, you will drive them away. And that was never my intent. It was only to bring out. You see what I'm saying? So now the thing is, wait a minute, Lord. Just tell me what you want him to do, and my job is to support him in it and to provide an atmosphere for him to do what you created him to do. That as a parent, that's all we can really do. God, you tell us what you've called them to do, and we'll nurture the way, we'll make the way, we'll provide everything, with the encouragement, the strength, not to try to make him something that you want him to be, whatever it is I call him to be. There's a calmness in that boy that he don't break under pressure. I'm like, you sure that don't bother you? It got to bother you. <laughs> no? I'm like, why? Because it's bothering me. 
So now I'm trying to put it on you because it's bothering me. Well, how come you ain't like that? Well, somebody got to be calm. You, you see what I'm saying? Everybody can't be. My wife and I were like that. It was like we were never frazzled at the same time when we was going through stuff. It was either one or the other. But we never were there at the same time because somebody had to be in their right mind for us to come out of the thing. You know what I'm saying? So what, what am I saying? You are enough. Recognize God wired you the way he wired you. You got all of the equipment in you to do what he called you to do because the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. That means God puts in you gifts when he created you. He gave you personality when he created you. He gave you a way of thinking when he created you that you'll see stuff other people don't see. Why? Because you just wired that way. So instead of you trying to change your wiring, just yield to it and say, this is Mike. This is who I am. Love it or leak, leave it, like it or lump it. When you get this, you get me. I can't give you nothing else I ain't got. You know what that does? It brings security and it destroys insecurity. Because you don't know, you no longer admire or desire somebody else's assignment. You cool with your own. And to say, this is what God created me to do. This is what he wired me to do. There are some people that's going to like me. There are some people that's not going to like me. And I'm cool with both. And you got to be like Jesus, who was of no reputation. In other words, he, listen, pride was eliminated. Three key areas you're going to have to make sure you overcome in your life. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Satan will try to get you in one of those areas to destroy you. So you got to make sure the door closed in all of those areas. I didn't put on my timer, so I don't know where I am right now. But, amen. I'm a... Okay. Since I'm here, let me go ahead. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. Let me go here. Let me go here. I'll just continue next week with the other stuff I had. Because it's all tied in. Because I knew I kept feeling like I need to deal with identity a little bit more before we get into full-blown authority. Because if you're not securing you, Satan will talk you out of your destiny and purpose. That's what happened with Eve. He said, hath God said? But watch this. He said, God knows the day that you eat of the fruit of the tree, you're going to be like him. That was a temptation. Why? Because she didn't know that she was already like him. Didn't God say, I created man in my image, my likeness, let them have dominion? Oh, that's good. Let me just roll with it. I'm going to just roll with being who I is. And please, I'm not, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody or anything, but I just got to say the way I'm feeling. Kelly, I believe God's saying you are already enough. And you need to recognize that you are enough. Then when you realize that you are a queen in his presence, that you've been created as a king and a priest, and that king, that word king, is all-encompassing, male and female. In other words, you are a ruler in touch with your God. It's like he says, as you come, draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. As you come to me in my presence and just seek me, I'm going to give you every answer you have ever wanted and needed. I've just been waiting on you to come to me. And I keep hearing this for you. I want you to see that I can take care of you. God says this. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Ring it. <laughs> I don't know why I just, it just made me think about it. <laughs> it's just stay in the spirit. I'm in the spirit. I, I got it. I got it. I know how to jump in it. I'm good. I'm good. God says this, I can afford your dreams. That's going to mean more to you later. It's going to hit you. 
So he says, don't dumb down your dreams to what you can afford. Now, in the beginning stages, there are some things when you're in babyhood stage of your spiritual development, you can think about toothpaste and it show up. You think about stuff and it just pop up because God is doing things for you because you're in infancy stage. But as you begin to grow, there are things just like with your own children that you expect for them to know how to do on their own. He says, I've given you authority over all the works of my hand. That means the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and whatever you need, the provision is already there. It's already in the earth. Now, our job is to now grow in knowing how to tap into the principles of God and work it to now draw from the unseen into the seen. So when you walk in by faith, you sit down and see, this is a time for you to train your son. Let's pray together. Let's ask God for this. Let's believe him together for this and watch him show up and watch it. Whether he feel like it or not, it will, it will be a seed sown into his spirit as a landmark that God is real and he cares about me. Now I'm speaking to her, but I know somebody else pulling and picking up from this. All right, okay. <laughs> hey, glory. Say it again, say, I am enough. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, listen, type it online. Say, if you're enough, believe it, you're enough. Now, say, if Jesus is enough, Jesus is enough, but he wants you to know you've been made in his image. God is trying to get, oh, okay, thank you. I'll have to do it next week. But part of me teaching you your authority, and I'm going to say it, but I'm going to come back and teach it. As the body, you are Christ. Hear me. Did not God say, I'll dwell in you, make my home in you, you'll, I'll be your God, you'll be my people? As a Christian, born again a believer, you are part of the body of Christ. Let me ask you this question. And the Bible makes correlation of the physical body where the spiritual body is concerned. Is my arm any less of Mike than my head? Are my feet any less of me? When you see my feet, when you see my hands, when you see my chest, when you see my head, it's all Mike. I'm going somewhere with this. Y'all better come with me. Because when you realize that you are him, even in 1 John 4, it might be 15 or something, it says, as he is, so are we in this earth. He said, the works that I do shall you do also, and greater works He says, be ye imitators of me. Y'all better get ready. What I'm, oh Lord, okay, I hear this. Whoo. Don't you know how Jesus did stuff? He spit, made clear the spittle, put it on a person's eyes. Told people, go wash in the pool of Siloam. Your sins be forgiven thee. Take up your bed, rise and walk. As he is, so are we. He tells Peter, go catch a fish, and the first one you catch is going to have the money to pay our taxes. As he is, so are we. And the works that I do, shall you do. Jesus, we got 5,000 is over there, not including the women and children. He says, find me something. He says, all we got is a little lad with a two-piece fish dinner. Two fish, five loaves. Jesus said, 
bring it to me. He tells Elijah, who was under an old covenant, he said, go to this widow woman's house. I've commanded her to sustain thee. Watch this. He went and she said, all I got is a little cruise oil and this little meal and me and my son, we're going to eat it and die. He said, before you do anything with your stuff, make me something. You better hear me. I could see the headlines. Preacher robs woman of her last food. Sings at 11. <laughs> you know all they want is this. You know, uh, that happened to me once. One of my guys, he, came, he called me, and the Lord told me he was looking for a job. The Lord told me, tell, he had a, a detailing business, a car detailing. He said, call him and tell him to come wash your car. I'm like, Lord, I don't, don't tell that man. Because, watch this, I try the spirit by the spirit. And he immediately brought up in my mind this account in the Bible. I called him, said, yo, listen, you know I don't say stuff like this. The Lord told me to tell you to come wash my car. He just burst out laughing. He said, man, he already told me that a long time ago. <laughs> he said, I'm on my way now. I lie to you not. While he was on his way to obey, he gets a call about a job. That ain't even the thing. He comes and washes my truck in the parking lot. That was the place we had back then. While he's washing it, a guy comes by and sees him washing the truck and said, hey, you detailing? He was like, he was about to get sarcastic. He was like, yeah, you see me washing it? Yeah, I do. I detail cars. He said, I own, a de I own a lot, a car dealership. Will you come and wash my cars on my lot? Mm -mm. Don't stop there. When he goes to wash the cars, he goes to the wrong lot. The guy said, no, that wasn't me, but I need somebody as well. Will you do mine? Not only that, his barber, he said there was a spot that another person had and he no longer was washing. He says, this is your spot. You can do whatever, you run your business from this place. He went there and in one day ran out of products because he had so much business that came through. Out of obedience of one seed. Well, uh-uh, uh-uh, watch this. I'm gonna drop something else on you. But because of his connection and obedience, I see, I ain't want to shout on that one. See, yeah, I, I got to give him. They ain't want to shout on that one. See, y'all ready for this? Yeah. It ain't about me. It's about you. The anointing upon, the anointing within is for strength or character. But the anointing upon is for service. Wow. The anointing upon my life isn't for me. It's for you. And for you to tap into and activate. Whenever you saw these miracles, you always saw a man of God present. Hear me, I'm going to bring it down further. So this ain't just for me. This is for you. As he is, so are you. And the works that I do, shall you do. Okay, we had this man of God come to our house here while we were in Atlanta. If I said the name, you know who this person is. I've said this before. My wife is here to tell you. I am not lying. I'm not lying. I don't even know to this day how it happened. A few friends of ours came over, brought this person over. About four or five people came in. My wife had baked some um, barbecue chicken, little wingettes. And so we offered them, we blessed the food, offered them something. And everybody was pulling out eating. When everybody finished eating, I, am I lying? It was the last bag of wings we had. It was all we had. But we were going to be a blessing to the people that came to our house. When we look back in the pan, 
it looked as though nobody had pulled out anything from it. If he did it with two fish and five loaves, and he said the same works that I do, shall you do. It's time for you to experience the living word. It's time for you to experience supernatural. The word has been going out all over the place. That you're going to see the supernatural of God like you've never seen before. And I'm not, listen, it ain't in a conference. It's in your everyday life when you coming across folk, that's going to be the mass explosion of the glory of God and the goodness of God. You just going to have to put yourself in position and be ready to be used by God. And your confidence got to be raised up. Your faith level got to be up not to shrink back. I've been there. When this guy I used to work with, and he came up to me one day, and he looked at me, and I, his eyes looked, looked real weird. And he just said this out of the blue, I know who you are. And I said, I know you know who I am. <laughs> you got to get ready. Okay. You got to be ready for some spiritual encounters. Ooh, Lord, do it just to show them. Don't let one word fall idle. Boy. I had this, this, this succession of dreams years ago. And God says, I'll speak in dreams and visions and all of those things. There were three dreams I had. It was like three nights in a row, I believe. The first dream... I was in front of my grandmother's house. And I had a family member that was chasing me around the car with a gun shooting at me. And I'm dodging, trying, I was like, what in the world is going on? And I'm dodging it. Then I came out, and then he came out and pointed the gun at me and began to shoot. And when he began to shoot, out of nowhere, I pulled out a purple, just like your shirt. It was like a purple cloak or sheet. And as he was shooting, it wouldn't penetrate the sheet, but I was speaking against the attack. I said, okay. Second night, I was in this warehouse and another person was chasing me with a gun again. I'm like, what in the world is with these guns? Folks checking me with guns? What in the world? But this time, the guy was straight in front of me and began to shoot. This time, I didn't pull a sheet. I opened up my mouth and spoke. And y'all seen the Matrix with Neo at the end, the first one, when they shot in the, in the, that's how it was in the dream. The bullet stopped and dropped right in front of me. Third dream, I was actually in my mom's house, and there was this lady, we were a part of the church in Atlanta, and there was a lady who served in ministry, she had a different personality, bless her heart, and it was like in the front window, it was just like she has this big window in her living room, and it was like the window burst, and it was like wind blowing, and her face, her hair was like huge. Her face shifted into an ogre. It shape shifted right in front of me. To my right was this guy who was a minister at the church, and he just, his face was bright, and he just smiled at me. And I was getting ready to speak against her, but just like in that movie, in the same movie, The Matrix, Leo's mouth sealed up. Have you ever seen that? The exact same thing happened in my dream. My mouth sealed, and I couldn't speak against her. I said, okay, God, I said, wait a minute. I know what some of this is. First part was that cloak represented authority and royalty. So I was speaking in the authority of Jesus. The second time I didn't see the sheep because I was established in my authority. Ooh, I never saw that before. That boy that just came out of me. The third one, and I couldn't understand everything. I knew some of it. 
So I called this pastor. I said, man, let me tell you this dream and see what you get out of it. I said, I know some parts of it, but I feel like I'm missing something. And I, the funny thing, I just talked to him the other day about it. He, did, he had no clue. I never told him until the other day about it. This was over 17, 18 years ago. He told me this. He said, Mike, he says, never speak out of anger. The reason why my mouth sealed is because I was so established in my authority that whatever I said was going to happen. And you have to have great responsibility over your emotions. That's what happened with Moses, and he didn't go into the promised land. He struck the rock out of anger when God told him to speak to it. This, this is a serious thing, folks. We're going to have to watch. When you begin to realize who you are, you just can't haphazardly say stuff. Because what you say is supposed to produce. You hear me? You are created in God's image and what he says is. Because his words are containers. Words contain, remember, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And your words will carry what's in your heart. You, you better hear, as you, you got to meditate on this. Because you, when you start walking, who, uh, not Smith, um, Lester Summerall. Great man of faith, great man of faith. There was one night that he was in a room, I forgot where he was, and this demon pushed, I mean, stuff like you see on the movies. A demon moved his furniture across the table. He rebuked the demon, and then he told him this. He says, you get out here in Jesus' name. But then he told him this, put my furniture back. And the spirit put the furniture back in place. This is why the word of the Lord, I don't know if y'all remember this, I spoke this the other Sunday, last Sunday or whatever, when I told you be mindful of what you start opening your spirit up to even in this month, because you got to be mindful because what Satan is trying to do is he's trying to dumb down the reality of your authority by making his power look greater than yours and imparting the spirit of fear, which will contaminate your faith. So listen, fear tolerated is faith contaminated. That means you will second guess yourself when you come into us. Say, I, I'm, try, I'm trying not to give you too much, but you got to be ready for this now. Y'all dealing with too many things. Some stuff ain't medical. It's demonic. And you got to know how to deal with the spirit behind the thing that's happening. I went into this woman's, my wife was with me, I, don't know, I think she was with me that day. We went into this person's apartment, and um, she was quote-unquote diagnosed with being bipolar. I, I'm not going to say, I'm not saying any names, nothing. So We went in to minister, and the look in this person's eye, I said, that ain't no bipolar. Be mindful what you open yourself up to. See, don't you know they call drink spirits? Why do they call it that? Why do they say, you don't understand, drugs, it comes from the Greek word pharmaceutical, where we get our word pharmaceutical. When you are in an intoxicated, inebriated state, you don't realize you are opening up yourself to even demonic activity at times. I can, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to go here with it. If you look at, it's a bunch of people in the music business. I know some people in the music industry, different things. You heard stories. There are some people who can't only, who can never produce unless they're in a high state. And what comes out of them feeds the people that listen to it. See, y'all keep thinking we being too deep. No, you ain't being deep enough. See, when you've experienced the supernatural, and you've encountered certain things, then you can't, I can't go back to being the same way because I've encountered, I've seen it, I've been exposed to it. I know it's real. Listen, okay, okay. See, I got to deal with this 
Because I'm going to talk to you a little bit when I'm going through this series of how to deal with devils, demons, and evil spirits. Satan don't like this type of talk. He don't like this type of talk. That means he can't bully you any longer because you're going to recognize you got authority over all the ability or power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Listen, I don't care if a witch or a warlock comes up to you and tries to put a curse on you. You can cancel that sucker out. And Listen, if you get into it, you, you better be ready. They gotta be, better be ready. And I had to ask the Lord, give me wisdom to know how to deal with people because I'll be ready to go there with them. I don't know if I've ever shared this publicly. This was a couple few years ago. Doing, it was on Halloween day. I was at work. And we had this little cubicle, like this little area where you can go and take a break and, and take a, a rest or a nap. Oh, I'm going to get ready to close out lower. I'm, I'm going over time. I fell asleep. While I was asleep, and all of the, it was the whole floor, the area I was in was decorated with the goons, goblins, all that stuff. In my dream, it was just as real as me standing here. This man, this black man and black woman with red on were in front of me, and I was trying to wake up, but the man came and blew a white powder in my face, and I fell back in my seat. Then I realized what was happening. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over you. And I woke up and I got up. That was not by accident. See, some of y'all are just like, oh man, you just telling these stories. Okay, you, okay, 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 okay. I'm trying to warn you, trying to tell you this stuff, because you don't always hear it preach as much in mainstream, but there is an arousal and there's an arousal and there's a stirring up and a rising of a generation that's going to walk in this level of authority like you've never seen, because they hungry for it. And I'll give you this last one, and that's it. I didn't realize how many encounters I had. Lord, that's all I just... <laughs> I'll share this last one. I was at work one day years ago, and I fell into a trance. It was kind of like a daydream state. While I'm working at my desk, I was in this cubicle where it's like nobody could bother me. You know, people come walk past, but I was listening to the word. And I went off. All of a sudden, there was, I was in this dark room, and there was this figure in the corner trembling but they look kind of shrunken and shriveled. I heard the voice of God said, that's the enemy, that's Satan. He's more afraid of you than you are of him. Scripture even says, look it up. The Bible says when we finally see Satan, we're going to be like, is this the one that up dead nations, is this the one that caused all of this stuff? You mean he the one? And he uses fear as a smoke screen. You got to realize, and I keep telling people this, I'm going to preach this till Jesus come. If, if the Lord tarries and I go by the way of the grave, I'm going to preach it as long as I can. You have this authority, folks. I'm telling you, it's time to understand who you are to walk in this thing and to not be intimidated by the enemy. We were driving from work one day. Man, just these encounters. My wife and I was in the car, and I shared this with y'all, about the, 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 the hurricane that had come in. It was a tornado coming in our area. I lie to you not. We both spoke to that thing and commanded it to cease in the name of Jesus. I'm not lying to you. When we went and watched the news, by the time we got home and watched the news, 
at the moment we were speaking, they said it dissipated or shift course. It was right in alignment to where we were driving. We did it together. No, I'm telling you. It's time to exercise, even in small areas. When you feel a presence come in the room, and it don't feel right, and you feel fear sneak in, you have to open up your mouth and come against it and rebuke the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. And watch this, it has to flee from you. Ooh, Lord, okay. Ooh, hold this for me, D. Hold this for me. Just, just, just hold it for me. I just got to, I feel like I just got to release something on my hand. I just, this, oh, Jesus, I'm telling you, you, you about to walk in. <clears throat> hear me, 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 hear me. There's going to be a level of honor that we have to begin to walk in in this house. The anointing you honor is the one you walk in. You better hear me, what I'm telling you now. Some of you have tapped into it to a degree. But I'm talking about I'm ready for this full-blown manifestation to be released. This is why it's important for us to come together and to do this together. Because the structure of this system has to carry the weight of this anointing. Uh, y'all hear what I'm, I'm, I'm telling you something. I'm getting ready, I'm, I'm getting ready to walk heavy on some stuff here. I, I'm, t- I'm talking different now. And I'm coming, I'm coming in on authority now. You're going to see the blinded eyes open like it ain't nothing. It's going to be like the cure of a common cold to you. You're going to walk in this authority where you lay hands on the sick and you see them recover. You hear me? You hear me? That you will learn how to stand in the face of anything that comes your way. And know that all is well because I control this environment. Glory to God. Glory to God. (laughs) By yourself. You hear me? You can walk those halls by yourself and take authority. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Come on now. Come on now. You have authority. Glory. Ooh, man, I feel this thing coming on me. Ooh, I feel the weight of it coming on me. Glory to God. Ooh. I remember my former pastor, I just saw him at a funeral not too long ago. He shook my hand and said, Mike, I don't know, out of the blue, I knew, he was, I knew it was by the Spirit of God. He said, walk in your authority. That thing shot through me. I'm like, I, that's the Lord. I said, yes, sir. And my first thought was, I already know I preach on this. I talk about this. I know what God called me. You know, but no, uh-uh. I had to humble myself and receive the word of the Lord. I knew he was using them. Walk in your authority. Walk in your authority. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Glory to God. (laughs) Glory. It's time to teach this generation to walk in it. Walking in it. Walking. Walking in the light. Walking. Yeah. And it'll be bright. Yeah, the victory, the victory. I see it. I see it, Lord. Victory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where things seem darkest, my light shines brightest. So don't run from dark areas, run to them. For you are the answer for everywhere I send you. And I come against every attack that would try to, yeah. I see this. I see the enemy trying to intimidate you. 
when you go into areas to try to stop you from doing it. But don't you dare stop. Because when you rise up in my authority that I've given you, says the Lord, every enemy has to flee and scatter. I'm talking about from administration to wherever. You better hear what I'm telling you. I'm not telling you to be, be disrespectful and think y'all, y'all know how to walk in it. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you're going to have to walk in this thing. And when they going to say you can't say that and you say I respectfully decline. The Lord says, if you honor him, he'll honor you. You'll go to administrations and say and the people in positions of authority and say, hear ye the Lord. If you honor what he's saying, he'll honor you in your administration. Y'all, man, y'all, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, <laughs> he bringing this out me. Y'all. I'm stopping, I'm stopping. I feel like, I feel like it's more, but I feel like I got, okay, 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 that's. Uh, I'm talking about signs, wonders, and miracles. Legs growing. I've seen it. Some of y'all seen in service. See, I grew up in that. Seeing arms shoot out. Deaf ears open. So for me, God raised me watching that, studying it. And watch this. The simplicity of walking in it, I just demonstrated and did it the way it was demonstrated in front of me. That's all I did. I would pray for ears to be open. The same way Pastor Pastor would do it. In the name of Jesus, you deaf spirit, in Jesus' name, come right out. (laughs) Plug it in, talking, and the same thing would begin to happen. I just believed it as a kid, probably no younger than y'all. And I'm sitting there watching like, man, me and my brother, my brother's five years older than me. He was, he was probably, I was probably 12, he was probably 17 at the time. And we saw people, he, I'm talking about an arm this much shorter, shot out, and, and he crying, I look at him, he crying, he's like, man, I ain't never seen nothing like this, man. And I'm like, man, I ain't never seen nothing like this either. And it's like, don't you know that marks somebody? That's, that draws. It's time for many infallible proofs. Drawing. I, he's, he's. I'm just building the atmosphere to a point. I'm building it to a point. We're building it to a point. The worship is going to have to intensify. I'm going to tell you now. Get ready. It's, it's going to have to intensify. And it's going to intensify. He's bathing you in his word and glory. Okay, let me, I got to stop. I got, I got to get out of here. Whew. I'm good in my own skin. We create our own platform. Whosoever will, whoever got ears to hear, let them hear. I'm telling you. Walking in authority. Walking in authority. Come here, Pam. Come here again. I don't know why I'm seeing me laying hands on you again. Whatever it is you need for wherever. Because you're dealing with these things. You're in the middle of it. Just face me. In the name of Jesus. 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 Grow, and you're growing in your authority. You're growing in your understanding. You're growing in the word. And you're going you're getting ready to walk into another realm and dimension. You've been hungry for it. Now you're about to see it. And don't you dare shy away from it. To say, Lord, it's too much. Uh-uh. You asked for it, now I'm giving it to you. Le rubash el Ooh, yeah. And there, Vrasa, let your ears be open to hear the voice of the Lord like never before. In Jesus' name. Rema shekora basa, yana koshete kan. Mende u sata, bofe sete kale. Now, you just being dressed for success, dressed for the calling, dressed for the assignment. 
Um, and so now you're, you're, I want you to be ready. Your mind is about to be enhanced. You're going to think different. Ooh. Man, I just feel this thing on my, ooh, I feel, ooh. You're receiving it. Ooh, girl. I'm talking about mind-blowing stuff. Don't be afraid to let your mind wander. Think. You're going to dream bigger. 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 God's about to stretch your faith. You're like, God, I can't. If you could do it, you wouldn't need him. Favor everywhere you go. Can somebody grab the oil I had in my bag? I want to anoint your hand. Yeah, we, we, I'm going to finish. The favor of God. Everywhere you go. In that side pocket at the bottom. The favor of God everywhere you go. Favor, 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 favor. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hmm? Great favor be upon you. That's good. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. I declare God's favor over you. Favor. Man, I keep hearing the word administration. Favor. 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 Mm-hmm. Ideas, concepts, after-school programs, mm. initiatives, directives. <laughs> they're going to be just flowing and flooding out of you. You have a book of them. Ideas. Not only for where you are, but for where you're going. And for others to implement and to follow. If you can dream it, I can do it, says the Lord. And they'll pay you for your curriculum. Yeah. Glory, whoo, in Jesus' name. Whoo, glory. I saw that. Lord, I saw that thing just as clear. It's going to cause you to prosper. It's going to cause you to prosper. And it's a done thing. It is so in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, they're coming. They come in hungry. I see them. They come in hungry because they're going to hear. Man, this, this is a different group that's coming. They hungry. Young folk, too. Yeah. Hungry. Yeah. Let's get ready to mentor yeah. and just love on them. I'm not trying to turn this into a deliverance ministry, but you're going to see great deliverance. Well, that's what the word is anyway. We, it's, it's always had this negative connotation to it. But people come to get set free. You say, I give you the ability to speak in the people's lives. Yeah, so it's like, all right. So, <clears throat> and let the gift roll. But with that, y'all got to pray. Y'all, please keep us in prayer. Keep us surrounded in prayer. I'll, I'll talk to the intercessors later about that. But listen. let me say this, man. I just want to say this. Intercessors, when you're interceding, especially when you're talking about interceding for the man or woman of God, and there are certain things that the Spirit of God starts revealing to you, sometimes the enemy will try to attack you to try to deal with the hedge around us. And you got to be ready to handle those things when they come because it's trying to come to deter you because of the weight in which we're walking in. We're walking in areas in the spirit that he knows if I get disrupted in these areas, there's going to be a mass freedom that's going to happen. We're, 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 there are cl- I'll deal with it later. There are four classes of demonic forces. But some of the ones we're dealing with, we're dealing with low level ones, but we will be dealing with principalities and powers over regions and territories. All right, I'll talk about it later. I'll talk about that later. I'll talk about that later. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Because we're about to connect with, I just sense this. There are going to be some other voices I'm going to start bringing in at God's timing. He's starting to connect us with different people. And it's going, man, it's going, whoo, you talking about heightened level of power. Amen. Father, we thank you. We bless you for this time, this opportunity. We give you glory, praise, and honor for it. We thank you that as people are sitting here, even under the sound of my voice, or those even online, we pray right now, Father, for your goodness, your mercy, your grace upon them. We declare and decree that all is well with them. Now, for those that have never made Jesus the Lord of their lives, we thank you right now that you will let them know that there is a no so salvation, that there is a literal heaven to gain and the hell to shun. 
Now, as every head is bowed and every eye is closed, if you never made Jesus the Lord of your life, uh, this is so important, that the Bible says this, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raising from the dead, you shall be saved. It's just that simple. I'm not going to ask you to come up. I'm not going to even ask you to stand up. But right there in your seat or whether online, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, but you want to today, if you're not absolutely positively sure that if you were to die today that you'd make it to heaven, just say, Pastor, include me in the prayer. Include me in the prayer. If that's you, as every head bowed, every eye is closed, I just want you to respect what I'm asking you to do right now. Just respect. That's all. As every head bowed and every eye is closed, you say, Pastor, include me in that prayer. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. Once again, I'm not going to ask you to come up here and stand up in front of the people, but right there in your seat. But I just want to simply acknowledge you. While every head is bowed, eyes closed, if that's you, and say, Pastor, include me in the prayer, I want you to slip up your hand right now, if that's you. Just slip up your hand. Next, there may be somebody that may say, okay, I'm born again and I know it, but I've been lacking power. I know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. But I want to experience that power today. If that's you, I want you to slip up your hand real quick, high for me. If that's you, you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit today. Then maybe somebody online as well. Last but certainly not least, if God is calling you to join this local fellowship, get to the place God has called you to be. He told Elijah to go to a certain brook and he says, there will I sustain thee. If that's you and God is leading you to join this local church, I want you to slip up your hand right now. But whether you're online, just send a message. You can email us at connect at spiritoffire.us and we'll have somebody from our connect team to get in touch with you. Praise God. Well, for those that may be online, as well as anybody in here in person, I want you to just simply repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord, and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's just give God, yeah, let's just give God some praise in here. Glory to God. Come on, y'all, come on, come on, come on, come on. I know. Hallelujah. Now, I want to do something. I want to do an exercise of faith. When we talk about praise the Lord, we talk about give God the glory. You know, sometimes I know we're tired. We might have been sitting a minute and everything. But I want us to begin to train ourselves to rejoice, just like heaven is rejoicing. So I, everybody stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Come on. I know y'all been sitting for a minute. It'll help you loosen up. We're getting ready to go. And I want us to give, to lift up our hand and give a huge shout of praise and glory to God on the count of three. One, two, three. Hallelujah! There we go. That's better. That's better. That's better. Yeah. Oh, listen, we got to learn how to shout for the Lord. Man, listen, if I was at the game, man, I'd be hoarse. Right there, just shouting and screaming, you know. Getting ready for the Cowboys this evening. Let's see how we do. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Well, y'all, y'all can have a quick seat. We want to honor God in our giving. Listen, there's some information coming up on your screen um, for those online, for those in person as well. Uh, if you desire to sow digitally, you can do so through Cash App, Venmo. Um, you can go to spiritofire.us, our website, and sow there. And it is a secured site. Whatever the Lord tells you to do, do it. As you give, we believe it'll be given back to you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. That God is going to give to your bosom. He said, whatever a man, as you purpose in your heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. A happy, hilarious, prompt to do a giver whose heart is in their giving. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you have an all-sufficiency in all things that you may abound to every good work. At this time, if you need an envelope, you can raise your hands for those that want to give an envelope as well. 
I used to say this back in the day, you know, you know some people still write checks. People still write checks. And I always would say you spell million, M-I-L-L-I-O-N. You're causing men to give into our bosom. We thank you, Father, that we live under an open heaven. We thank you through faith in Christ, and the blessing is already upon our lives. We give you glory and praise for it in advance. We are expecting things to turn around for our good. We're expecting doors to open and no man can shut. We declare debt cancellations, removals, and reductions now in Jesus' name. We thank you right now that new contracts are being given, new jobs and opportunities. We declare and decree it now. We thank you that you're turning no's into yeses for your people. We thank you, Father, that you're changing policies, rules, re regulations, hearts, minds, and decisions and laws for our benefit and for our good. We bless you and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And the church say, amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet. I know I kind of went over time. Please forgive me for that. Listen, Father, as we leave this place, but never out of your presence, thank you that the angels of God are encamped around about us to keep us, to protect us in all our ways. No evil plague will come nigh our dwelling. Nothing evil shall happen unto us. We bless you and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. amen. On the count of three, shout Jesus. One, two, three. Jesus. You are dismissed. Go in peace.